Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of CCR Liberty in detail. In our last episode we were having a look at the ADV options for the Liberty units and in this episode we're going to have a look at the scrubber options. So let's dive into it. The rebreather uses the scrubber to scrub off carbon dioxide, a byproduct of our breathing. And in reality, how it works is that the gas travels from the exhaling lung into the scrubber, where it gets scrubbed off of CO2, and then it travels back into the head for further analysis. And then the gas travels further into our inhale lung for us to be able to rebreathe it. So this is the scrubber and this is where it's actually located on the unit. So it's in between the head and the frame of the unit. There are various types of scrubbers, but the ones that you will most commonly see in rebreathers nowadays are two types, axial and radial. Liberty uses a radial type of scrubber. So the way this scrubber works is that the exhaled gas travels down through the cavity along the side of the scrubber then it travels inside, inward, into the scrubber where it gets scrubbed of the carbon dioxide. So it travels like that. And once the carbon dioxide gets scrubbed off, then the gas travels upwards straight into the head for further analysis. There are three main reasons why the radial type of scrubber was chosen for the Liberty units. The main reason was the work of breathing of the units. The Liberty was built with work of breathing in mind and the best results for the work of breathing were achieved from the radial type of scrubber. The second advantage of the radial type of scrubber is that when the gas travels downwards, it actually creates a layer of gas around the scrubber that helps to insulate the scrubber, which prolongs the time of the soda lime inside because it keeps it warmer. The reason number three is that the radial type scrubber is more uh, resistant to partial flooding because since the gas travels inward and then upside, then even if the scrubber is partially flooded, there is still room for the gas to go through and get scrubbed off and then go up into the head. The walls of the scrubber consist of external and an internal metal mesh and there is a lid that pushes down onto the softener lime which is pushed down by a pressure lid which consists a set of springs that keep the tension on it. Later on in the video we're going to have a look at the beauty of this design more closely when we'll be demonstrating how you actually fill the scrubber up. Now we're going to have a look at the different sizes of the scrubbers that you can choose from. So let's start with the short scrubber. As you can see, the short scrubber is shorter than the other scrubbers, but it actually still contains two and a half kilos of softener lime. The only difference why this scrubber is actually shorter than our standard scrubber is that this um, canister does not have a water trap in it. What you will find inside is a pad that absorbs any moisture. The short scrubber can be used in a side mounted configuration as well as in the Liberty Light configuration and the expected runtime is between four to six hours on the scrubber. The duration of the scrubber depends on the water temperature. The warmer the water is, the longer the scrubber lasts. Next, moving on to our standard scrubber. We also have a two and a half kilos of softener lime to fit into this one and you can also expect the runtime of this one anywhere between four to six hours. The only difference between the short and the standard scrubber is again the water trap that the standard scrubber contains and by removing the lid of the water trap it can be easily cleaned. If the duration time of the previous two scrubbers isn't long enough you can choose extra light scrubber. This scrubber contains 3.3 kilos of softener lime 
and it's good for anywhere between five to eight hours of a runtime. The other great thing about the extra light scrubber is that its size is exactly the same as the 2.5 kilo scrubber. So it can be used without any changes in all configurations of, of our units. So on the bottom of the scrubbers, you can actually see where they sit in the frame of the, of the unit. When you're storing your partially used scrubber, you want to keep it in a sealed environment. For this reason, you can get a lid for it, which is an o-ring around it, and actually seals the scrubber off. Uh, you can select it in our configurator and uh, get it with your unit. You just basically easily place it in its place, push it down, and that keeps your scrubber cartridge nicely sealed off to prolong your scrubber's life. On the top, there's a sticker where you can actually label when your scrubber was filled and how much time has been spent on the scrubber. Speaking of how long the scrubber has been used for or a stack time, there's also another way for you to know. Your Liberty actually measures your stack time and you have access to it throughout your dive in your screens displaying the status of your sensors as well as during your pre-dive check. Every time you're in a dive mode, the unit counts the time you spend on a scrubber and you can also adjust whether the stack time is calculated on the surface or not. You can also set up a reminder for the unit to remind you for certain time that you spent on the scrubber. So you just basically select how much time or when you want to be reminded and then the unit will remind you by vibration and by displaying a blue message saying stack time and then the time that you have pre-selected that you would like to be notified. So the next time when you refill your scrubber, you just reset the stack time and start over again. Now we're going to have a look at how easy it is to pack the scrubber. For soft no lime, we recommend using Softener Lime 797, which the unit's been tested with. Okay, so let's have a look at how easy this is actually. It's quite easy. So to get inside of the scrubber, you push down on our pressure plate, pull the retaining ring out. This has loosened, and now we just pull the lid up. So here you can see our central seal. And over here inside, you can actually see our levels. So this is where we need to fill our softener lime up to. So you would go, the standard way of filling the scrubber would be you fill up a third, do your pack, fill up another third, do your pack again, fill up the last third up to the markers. So you would like to, you want to get them between minimum and maximum. You do your packing, make sure they're still, still there. And then you reassemble the cartridge. So put the pressure plate on, push down on it, put the retaining ring in. The beauty of the design is that if you don't put enough softener lime in, the retaining ring will not go into its place. And also if you put way too much, it would not go in again. So there has to be the right amount of softener lime to be put in, in order for you to be able to close the scrubber up. So it's another safety feature of this scrubber. So then you do your packing, pack roll, pack roll, then you roll it on a flat surface as well. And then you reopen the scrubber again, the same way. This is how simple it is, push down, pull the retaining ring out. We open the scrubber back up, check if we're still within the level. And if we are, we're happy to close the scrubber back up and we can uh, move on with our pre-dive preparation of our unit. I'll actually show you what the partially used scrubber looks like. And now here you will be actually uh, easily able to see how it's fill up to the right level. So over here you can see we have a partially used um, soda lime inside and here you can see that we're just ted below our max um, marker of um, how much um, softener lime should be in it. 
Okay, so that's it for uh, today's episode. I hope you found it informative and I hope that it helped you to choose which scrubber would be right for you. So in our next episode, we're going to be having a look at the options of back plates, stands and wings. And as always, for more information, you can visit our configurator at divesoft.com where you can configure the unit based on your desired configuration. And if you have any further questions, please email us at info at divesoft.com. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.